It is a quick brief presentation. It is a lecture on the Charter Act 1793, its circumstances, main provisions and significance. It is a part of the lecture series with the link to complete a usable answer. The motive of the partial display and the content of the video. It partially displays the main video of the lecture titled Charter Act 1793, Circumstances, Provisions, Significance. Only the circumstances of the Charter Act 1793 is streamed herein. It is presented under the impression that studying a long answer to any question in parts helps one grasp the answer. It helps in consolidating the answer. It helps in quick revision. It helps in rewriting the answer in one's own words and phrases. The link to the complete answer is given below in the video's description. The purpose and plan of the lecture. The lecture is on the topic of the Charter Act 1793. It is based on the content of the book, The History of Constitution of India, the Charter Acts during the Company Rule in India 1773-1858, ISBN 13-978-1983046834, with an OCLC number slash unique identifier, 10861699936. The link to the online purchase of its ebook and paperback copy is given in the video's description. The purpose is to provide a video study aid to the content of the book. The lecture begins now. The topic of the lecture is the circumstances, provisions, and significance of the Charter Act, 1793. Let us first get a glimpse of the Act in the beginning. By the Act of 1767, the British Parliament allowed the company the privilege to retain territorial possession in India. The continuation of the company was decided in the Regulating Act, 1773, wherein it was allowed to exist for the next 20 years. The British Parliament maintained the institution of the Board of Control, which directed, superintend, and controlled the workings of the company. From the Charter Act, 1793, a series of charters sustained the company till 1858. In 1793, the Parliament granted the charter to the East India Company of London. This was historic because earlier, the East India Trading Company was getting the charter from the royal family, and by 1793, the Parliament had played that role. The ownership, which rested in the court of the director, felt satisfied that the royal privilege was legally secured by the British Parliament. Let us now study the circumstance leading to enactment of the Charter Act 1793. The Charter Act of 1786 may taken as the first influencing factor. The British Parliament was dominated by such political personalities of Britain who were friends of Lord Cornwallis. The loss of American colonies weighed heavily on the minds of Lord Cornwallis and his friends in the British Parliament. Lord Cornwallis was one of the generals who had surrendered to the American revolutionaries. The British politicians were interested in adjusting Cornwallis to a respectable place. Cornwallis demanded a better say in the British Indian administration as per his status, for which the British politicians had made adjustments to the British East India Company. Next, the Declaratory Act of 1788 was also an influencing factor. Henry Dundas was the first president of the Board of Control. Henry Dundas deputed four royal regiments to India and paid the expenses out of the Indian revenue, which the Court of Directors of East India Company objected to. The 1788 Act transferred the full power and supremacy to the Board of Control, which showed the benefit that the British Empire was getting out of India. The Act transferred the power of the company to the Ministry of the Crown. Next, the directors of the company applied for the renewal. The directors of the company sought the renewal of the charters before the tenure of 20 years came to a close by. The power of the company was gradually being withdrawn from it by statutes like the Declaratory Act of 1788. The monopoly of trade with India held enough attraction to maintain the company by the court of directors and the prestige involved in making appointments in India. It was considered a privilege bestowed upon the court of directors by the royal house. Then, there was the support of ministers to the company. Many ministers in the crown had a direct interest in the existence of the company. They had patronized the company. They had a pecuniary and political interest in maintaining the company. Even there were favorable circumstances. When the company's expiry date approached, Britain got involved in a war with France, and the country's attention was entirely diverted to that war. Some merchants petitioned the parliament to end the monopoly of trade granted to the company. 
The bill for a new charter was quietly passed in the parliament because of the factors mentioned above.